Hi, it's Judy and welcome to another reading vlog. So today we have the fourth vlog in a little series that I've been doing, which is my reread of A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. So I have been rereading the series in preparation for A Court of Silver Flames. However, today is the 16th of February, which is actually the release date for A Court of Silver Flames. And I do actually have it right here. And I'm so happy and so excited. But I only finished reading A Court of Wings and Ruin today, which you will see in that vlog. I am now going to quickly start A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah Joe Mass, obviously. Um, so this vlog will be me rereading A Court of Frost and Starlight. This is going to be a very short vlog because this is quite a short book. It's only 200 pages and something. So I plan to read this tonight and then hopefully start A Court of Silver Flames. But I don't know. There will be a separate reading vlog for A Court of Silver Flames which will be spoiler free and include a review so that will be coming very very soon if you haven't already seen my other vlogs i will have them all linked down below they all contain spoilers so if you have not read this series and don't want to be spoiled do not watch this video do not watch those reading vlogs either but yes we're going to be rereading a court of frost and starlight and i actually realized and i don't know how this happened i never finished this book when it came out i thought i'd read it but i haven't i only ever read I don't even know how much of this I read, but I read like so many pages and then never finished it. Don't know why. Thought I had read it, but I haven't. So I'm very, very excited because some of this is going to be totally new to me. And I'm just intrigued to see what this is like. I know a lot of people don't really like this book, but I think I'm going to really like it. So I'm excited to see what happens in it. There's lots of different character perspectives in here as well, which I'm excited for. Um, so yes, I will be reading in this. So if you would like to see me reread this, then please keep watching this vlog. And I will check in with you guys in a bit. <laughs> since I started my A Court of Frost and Starlight vlog and I did originally plan to read and finish this on the release day of A Court of Silver Flames so I could then start that. That just hasn't happened. I've ended up spontaneously busy the last few days so I still haven't started A Court of Silver Flames either but I'm not stressed like I'm looking forward to reading it still. But it's currently 2.30 and today is the, what date is it? Today is Friday the 19th of February and today is going to be the day that I do finish this book so Yes, it's 2.30pm, I'm currently on page 76, so there's only like 230 pages in this book, so it's definitely doable, so I plan to read and finish this today. I do have a couple of reading updates I do want to chat to you guys about from when I last read this. So on page 28, we have like a chapter that's from Cassian's perspective and I'm loving reading like all the different perspectives of the characters like I just think it's so interesting to see things from their point of view and like how they feel about certain things and also this takes place a few months after the war with Highburn so it's really interesting to see how everyone's dealing with that and the after effects and what's going on really but this one chapter and this one page um of Cassian and Cassian's talk about like what happened to his mother and like how he feels about it and it's just so so sad and like I don't know, it really does give a good insight into Cassian a bit more and a more personal, like, 
feel if that makes sense because we know a lot about Cassian but we don't at the same time like he's still a bit mysterious and I'm really obviously intrigued to find out more about Cassian and Nesta because obviously A Cut Silver Flames is from their point of view. So sad like reading about what happened to his mother and like how he had to like cope with things so yeah there's that and then there's also page 38 where um Feyre has gone down into Polaris into the art like quarter and she bumps into the fairy that she saw in Akamath I think it was where she had her water wolves um and there was that one um like I think it was like a lesser fae had like a pipe and was like trying to like fight off loads of high burn soldiers and stuff and she bumps back into her and she introduces herself as Resina and then she says to Feyre um we keep away to let you have your privacy but don't think for one moment that there isn't a single one of us who doesn't know and remember who isn't grateful that you came here and fought for us and it's just like yeah, it's just so heartwarming to see, like, Feyre interacting with these characters again in her home and these are her people now and how her people feel about her. And I just really, really like seeing that and, like, it's just, it's nice. And to know that she did survive. Um, but they're, like, the only things really, like, to talk about at the moment. I have obviously been tabbing this. Um, so I do have a few tabs in here, but nothing really I want to mention. I have, like hundred and something pages to read so that is the plan today is to finish this and i'm really really excited so yeah i'm gonna go and do that now and i will update you guys when i have something that i want to talk about so i don't have like loads of reading updates or anything because this book isn't very long and it's just kind of like a nice little novella but i'm currently on page 172 so i don't have a lot left but i'm just loving this there's nothing in particular really to talk about i'm just really enjoying like the family dynamic of this book seeing like the inner circles just kind of be themselves and spend time together and just kind of have like a well-deserved rest after the war like it's just so heartwarming the only like things that have happened in here is like um reese went to visit tamlin to talk about how like he's not really enforcing his borders at the spring court and he said some things to tamlin that he probably shouldn't have and obviously tamlin has like no servants he has no people he has no court he ha doesn't have anything like he's totally on his own disheveled like alone and for me, I feel like this is going to cause big problems later down the line because being alone, filled with hatred and just like angry, not a good recipe at all, you know? Yeah, and then there's the like the unrest in the Aurelian camps. I think a lot of people are feeling angry for all the soldiers that they lost and they're trying to pin the blame on someone. I don't know how that's going to play out. It is making me worried. So there is those two things and then there's Nesta. Nesta is just being straight up horrible. Like... I think it's because she's struggling to deal with her trauma. I don't think it's anything personal, but she's just shut herself off to everyone and is like drinking all the time and having one night stands. And there's nothing wrong with either of those things, but she's purposely like alienating herself and kind of just not talking to anyone and not being part of her family. Like she wants nothing to do with them. I think it's because she's just trying to work through her trauma, but it's still like really sad and she's still being like, really really horrible to Feyre and Elaine and it's not very nice to see so I mean there's that and Lucian is living with Queen Vasa and Jorian on the human land and it's just kind of like the three of them don't really have a home so they're all together so that kind of makes sense um but yeah I don't have any other reading updates I'm gonna carry on reading some more and then I'll either update you guys or I will have finished it so yeah <laughs> I'm enjoying it Okay, so I've just read chapter 21 and there's like a Nesta's like point of view like at the end of it after like Cassian tried to walk her home 
and she was like just go away leave me alone and all that and she's talking about how like most of the time it was just silence ringing drone and silence she hadn't felt anything in months and she told me how time she was like passing her in a blur and like she just doesn't feel anything like at all and i think like basically she's just really really like not coping like she's not dealing with her trauma and everything that happened with the war and her father's death and just everything and instead of dealing with it and facing it she's just choosing to be even more horrible than usual and just totally isolate herself and just like not allow herself to feel anything and it's really sad but she is being such a bitch about it <laughs> but i mean it's still sad and she's obviously dealing with stuff which is why she's just shutting herself off to everyone and yeah it's sad <laughs> so i finished a quarter frost and starlight and i absolutely loved it this was just such a nice like heartwarming book but i also felt like it left so many things open for future books like the unrest with the aurelian warriors and then like the stuff with tamlin the queens and all the stuff in human land and whatnot like there's no conclusion to any of that yet so obviously sarah j Mas intends to write some more books and there's also like the whole Azriel and elaine thing kind of going on as well and then obviously cassian and nesta and then feyre and recent are now trying for a baby so <laughs> there's a lot happening in this book and i'm just so excited for the future of these characters and to see what sergio mass does with them but i just love this this was just such a, like a nice fun book and like a lot of people don't enjoy this and i think it's because maybe people were expecting like something else but i feel like this is such an important book and i feel like this is something that when sarah j mass does write future books and there's a new plot line this would have been like a nice stepping stone in between because this is just a nice kind of catch up as to like what characters are feeling now that the war has ended what exactly is going on what things still need to be resolved like it kind of covers all those things so i think this book is going to be really important in the long run i think that it's just like a really nice like in between and it was nice to just kind of actually see the characters kind of doing normal things like family get-togethers and stuff and like just seeing the dynamics a bit more and how they're all dealing with what happened and i don't know i really enjoyed this it was just a nice little like calming book compared to aqua because aqua was so like emotional and intense and like epic scenes and this is just like nice and wholesome and i really appreciate that and i really enjoyed it i'm just gonna see i think i had a couple of things to talk about i love this so reese has bought like this massive estate and he said to Feyre, like do whatever you want with it like build a home for our family and he says build a house with a painting studio build a house with an office for you and one for me build a house with a bathtub big enough for two and for wings Build a house with rooms for all our family. Build a house with a garden for Elaine. A training ring for the Aurelian babies. A library for Amrin and an enormous dressing room for more. Build a house with a nursery fairer. Oh, it's just so cute and I just love this. Like, oh, I hope they get that nice, like, well-deserved future. I really do. This was just so sweet and I love that and it made me so emotional. And then Feyre's, like, set up her little classes with racina and they're like teaching the kids how to paint and stuff and like help them cope with like their trauma and things from like the war that affected them and it's just so heartwarming and i just really really love this book it was just so cute um this vlog is going to be quite short because obviously this book is very short there's not much to talk about it's kind of just like a novella and like an in-between like i said stepping stone kind of book and it was just so fun to read things from all the characters perspectives like i really really did love that but I still want all of the Akatar series, but from Reese's point of view. Like, please write that Sarah J Maas because I want it so bad. But yeah, I absolutely adored this book. I really adored my reread of all these books. I am so happy to have reread them again. They just bring me so much happiness and I just, yeah, I love them so much. I adore these characters so much. I love the world, the plot, everything about these books and I just... I always feel sad whenever I finish them because I just want to reread them again. But I do have A Court of Silver Flames to start now and I'm so excited to start that. I'm really interested in seeing what happens with Nesta in particular because I do feel like she's dealing with a lot of stuff and a lot of trauma and harboring a lot of not good stuff. So I'm intrigued to see how her character might grow and change in a course of flames but yes i had so much fun doing this reread and doing these vlogs so i hope that you guys have enjoyed all my reading vlogs if you've missed the other ones that i've done i will have them linked in the description box down below where you can go and watch them obviously they're all spoiler filled 
and I will be doing a reading vlog and review for A Court of Silver Flames. It will be spoiler free so you can go and watch that whether you've read the book or not when that goes up. It will be coming very very soon and I'm so so excited to read this book. I've had so many good things and I'm here for the smut as well like I can't wait for the smut. Um, but yeah I'm just so excited about all the upcoming books. I really hope Sarah J Mass releases some more details soon of what other things she's planning, what the characters she might write about. I kind of do want another little novella if like Feyre and Reese do have a little baby and stuff like it'd be really nice to see that. Yes anyway I'm rambling I hope you did enjoy this video if you did please do give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you'd like to I make bookish videos twice a week and I also host weekly live shows so if you don't want to miss any of those make sure you hit the subscribe button and join my little corner on the internet all my social medias will be linked in the description box along with the vlogs that I've done previously like I said I hope you're all safe and well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!